Hello viewers, you've just tuned in in time for Simon Christie and 4 Drive TV and what a great episode we've got planned for you. We've got highlights of round two from WTI. We've got plenty of tips, hints and tricks to get the most out of your 4 Drive. I'm Simon Christie, this is 4 Drive TV. Let's get into it. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard. He's nearing 80. They've just entered their teens. He's worked the last 65 years as a mechanical engineer. They play video games. Kids in my day never got away with things like that. Brought up in two completely different worlds. Well, and hairdo looks like a mop. There is one interest they have in common. Four-wheel drives. Tune in to see whether these juniors can withstand the heat and put up with Alan. And you missed a bit back here. This is the boys' last lesson, and the topic is gearboxes. Okay, guys, what's this? Gearbox. Gearbox? Trans case? Yeah, okay. So, how many gears do you reckon we've got in this? Six, including reverse. Well, the six, including reverse. Yeah, this is a five speed, is what we call a five speed. You normally don't include reverse if you ask the question. It's four speed yeah. plus reverse, you're right. Okay, so that's a simple sort of thing. Turn the end of that for a minute, James. Now, there's nothing happening out of back. Why is that? Transfer case. It's a neutral. Okay, so we put it in gear. Not turning, why not? Is it crook? Okay, That's so we haven't got it in gear, all right? So we select the gears, let's say we take, so we go. Uh, first gear. Okay, we, so we turn that, but it's not, yes, yeah, it is turning that. Is it driving? Yeah, it's driving out the back. Okay, so he's turning that a lot of times for only a small amount here. So we've got a lot of power there and then we get the vehicle moving, and then we can select eventually second, third, fourth, and eventually, say, fourth gear, and it's harder for him to turn, but it's going faster here, and then there's actually a fifth gear here, which makes this turn faster than his turn. So that's the operation of a gearbox, okay? Al introduces the boys to Dave, one of the gearbox specialists at Terrain Tamer. Man, he's been working on gearboxes for how long? Uh, 33 years. Yeah, oh. how about that? Okay, should, have, should be able to learn a bit off him. Well, what's the funny colour? It's from the Northern Territory, oh, so all yeah, the bulldust okay. is stuck in it. Yeah, right, okay. All right, I'll leave you with Dave. Be on your best behaviour. Remember what I told you yesterday, you've got a wire between your mouth and your ears. Every time you open your mouth, your ears shut. So when you talk, you're not learning. <laughs> Keep that in mind. Okay, buddy, catch you later. Dave has a gearbox out of a Hilux that needs reconditioning. Now, just by without pulling anything apart, I can see that the gear stick pins are all worn out. And the other thing is that his spigot's all worn. Until we pull apart, we don't know if we can just get that repaired by the engineer or we have to put a new input shaft into it. So all right, so what we'll make a start and pull it apart. Spring the ball out of there. Alright, which one of you want to take the back out of This is the back of the gearbox, boys, and this is the fifth gears. And now for the front housing. All right, now the other thing is, boys, all right, the bolts are different lengths. And those cones ones are different lengths to the gear stick housing ones. That's all right for me, because I've been doing this for a long time. I just throw them on the bench and I know where they go. All right, so we'll just give this a tap, and that'll come off. We have to take this circle clip off from around the baron so we can take this case off. Now, which one of you is one over there? I try and get it off. All right, the baron clips there. Now, the trick is to use your finger to pull the clip off over there. That's it. The next thing is to take this main case off. Give it a bit of a tap. Levers, they don't damage nothing. Now 
All right then boys, now that we've got this, all the cases off, so we're looking it over, can you see anything wrong with it? it looks a bit worn around here, these. It is worn there, but that's not where it's worn. It's worn on the actual teeth down there. We've got pit marks in it, yeah. so that needs to be replaced. Okie dokie then. Dave finishes pulling apart the gearbox so it can be fully analysed. Now looking at that, looks all right down that end, but we'll have to then wash it up and inspect it a bit better. Dave shows the boys how to press the gears off. No, I don't know it. All right, guys. All right, Dave, how's yeah. things going? Pretty good, Al. The boys teaching you a few things, are they? Oh, yeah, this one's taught me how to talk a lot. <laughs> OK. All right, guys, I want to show you something else. Let's go. Say right, thanks to Dave. Dave. Hey, Dave. No worries. Okay, Cheers, mate. fellas. All right, hold that up for us, buddy. Al uses one of the gearbox housings covered in bull dust to show the boys how sandblasting works. How do you reckon that does then? Uh, blasting sand and air yeah, together yeah. to rub it away. Rub it off. Yeah, okay. And sometimes if you're doing metal, you'll even get sparks off it. It hits that hard. Oh. And sometimes you can actually pit it. So they use different types of sand for different things. Uh, have a feel of that, guys. Nice and soft and smooth. Yeah. All right, so that's sand blasting. Let's go and uh, finish off for the day, okay? Yeah. Okay, so you guys, you made it to the end. Pretty excited? Yeah. Well, I come back and do it again. So it takes a while to let it sink in. So what's some of the things you learned? Well, there's so many parts just, just to make something like a gearbox. Yeah, right, okay. What do you think in the future? What, what's, how will you use some of the information that you've got now? I'm okay. just making sure it's all, all fine before I go out on a trip, so. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. And what about you? Just so I quirked on my Land Rover. Yeah. You your dad's winch. You pulled the winch apart last night, I believe. Yeah. You get that back together? Yeah, yeah. just... Little sprocket Al gives the boys some terrain tamer goodies to take away with them before it's time to say goodbye. Okay, guys, this is about the end of it. Yeah, we've enjoyed having your company. Yeah. Thanks for the. Yeah. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, all right. All right. Give us a hug. Yeah. Good on you, bud. Okay. If you need anything, give us a call. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, I'm Brad Smith from Mickey Thompson Tyres. I'm often asked by people why their more modern four-wheel drive tyres don't seem to bag out as much in the bottom as their older tyres that they used to have. Well, it's quite simple. With modern tyre design, we're starting to see a move with manufacturers to create tyres that tend to bag less, but grow more in the length of the tread when you're lowering the pressure. This is really important, because when you go off-road and you're lowering the pressure, you want the protection of the steel belts, what's inside the tread, not to run on essentially what's the weaker wall without the steel belt. If you're looking at your tyres when you're lowering the pressure, what you should experience is a tyre that doesn't tend to bulge or bag out so much in the base, but what you'll see as you're lowering the pressure, the footprint of the tyre will actually grow further in length along the length of the tread. So that's a bit more info on lowering your tyre pressures on your four drive tyres. Thanks for joining me for this week's Mickey Thompson Tyre Tip. Holden's toughest 4x4 ever has arrived. Introducing the all-new Holden Colorado 7. It comes with seven seats as standard and it's loaded with serious off-road grunt. You'll get three-ton towing and the awesome 470 newton meter Duramax diesel engine, plus an impressive weighting depth and hill descent control, all for the hardcore adventurer. The all-new Holden Colorado 7 is here. Take it off-road at your Holden dealer today.
Now, who doesn't want more power? And I bet that most of you with diesels have your hands in the air. DP chip is not a snack food, it's the real deal. And simply modifies the engine's fuel injection parameters to increase performance to a measurable difference of up to 35% more power and torque and up to 10% better economy. DP chip, the only diesel power chip with a five year warranty, 24 seven tech support and user adjustability. For more information on DP chip diesel power, call 02 or visit dpchip.com. Got a ute? Need more space? Need it to be safe and secure? And of course stylish? Then look no further than Carry Boy. Designed with the true lines of your vehicle in mind and the ultimate in functionality, a Carry Boy canopy will transform the look and performance of your utility. For more information on why Carry Boy are the world leaders in canopy design, durability and practicality, visit carryboy.com.au. Drivers, we all love technology and we all love our gadgets. But when you're out here in these remote areas, staying connected can sometimes be a drama. Now, of course, having service is one thing, but also keeping power to your devices can be a whole nother issue. I'd like to introduce you to a fantastic little gadget that we found. It's called the SolarPod Buddy. It is inexpensive and it's basically a contained battery with its own solar charger. You can sit it on the dash during the day whilst you're driving. It'll charge up. You can see the red light there, it's actually still accepting charge as we go. And if I turn the device on, you'll see a light up showing that it's got almost maximum charge here. So all you need to do at the end of the day is to find the right plug. It has a USB outlet. Plug in your smartphone here. In my case, it's got a cover to match the 40. My own favorite four wheel drive. And there you can go, lights up and beeps immediately, it is charging. So a great nifty device, inexpensive, solar pod buddy, a great way to keep you charged when you're out here in these remote areas. Solar energy, you can't get better than that. This week we've got WTI, Warn Trophy Italia, back on 4 Drive TV. This extreme 4x4 event from Italy is part of a growing series of hardcore winch challenge style of events that attract a diverse range of competitors from across Europe. This footage, taken at round two of the 2013 series, finds the competitors driving under considerably different circumstances to the lush, green and closed in forests of round one. Let's now follow some of the highlights from round two of the Warn Trophy Italia as the tough competitors take on these rugged, steep, rocky and dusty trails in regional Italy. Well, the Italians have certainly got some serious rigs and some amazing terrain to explore. 
Make sure you hang around as we see extra highlights and learn more about the Warren Trophy Italia later in this episode of Full Drive TV. we all love modifying our rigs but one of the most misunderstood and forgotten areas is right down here underneath the vehicle out of sight and out of mind we often forget that it's the area down here where most of the work gets done in keeping us mobile off-road and suspension is a major part of that but what else do we need to think about when we modify suspension if you've got a live axle coil front end then caster can be a real issue and a great way to fix this is with a set of superior Superflex radius arms. Tuned for correct factory caster, a quality set of radius arms like these will also be far stronger and will greatly improve articulation. With any suspension lift, a variety of other components can also come under abnormal stress. Quality adjustable panard rods are stronger and will recenter your differential. Extended brake lines will stop you from stretching and splitting your brake hoses. Mounts for your brake proportioning valves will need to be extended, as will your sway bar links. Steering components will be at greater angles, and along with larger tyres will also be placed under greater loads. Quality upgraded steering arms will rectify this, along with improved strength and durability in both the arms and tie rod ends. So as you can see, we need to think about far more than just shocks and springs when raising vehicles. It's also important to remember when you're looking for 4x4 products, don't shop on price alone. Look for superior products and enjoy superior performance. The next generation of shock absorbers is here. Leading the way in 4x4 suspension development, Old Man Emu introduces the most advanced and finely tuned shock absorber on the market. Nitro Charger Sport incorporates a new valving system that instantly adapts to all terrain for an outstanding smooth ride and phenomenal control. Backed by a three year 60,000 kilometer warranty, you can trust Nitro Charger Sport, built in Australia for Australian conditions. When the going gets tough, when you're bogged down deep, or when your mates reach out for help, Mean Mother is your first choice for recovery gear and winches. From the Tough as Nails Edge Series, built for passionate four-wheel drivers and packed with quality components and features, to the over-engineered Boss Series, offering superior reliability, endurance and efficiency under the toughest conditions, Mean Mother has a winch for all applications. Check out meanmother.com.au and explore your limits with a Mean Mother winch, the mother of all winches. At Terrain Tamer, we've tried to take all the hard work out of four-wheel driving, so you can be an expert as well as an enthusiast. Our parts interpreters talk fluent four-wheel drive because we're talking with 40 years' experience. We've got all the four-wheel drive parts and accessories that you'll ever need, so you can toss them in the back for cheap insurance. When you're miles from the closest mechanic, you'll appreciate that advice. Terrain Tamer, we talk fluent four-wheel drive. My name's Peter McQueen, and this beautiful girl here is my rig. She's a 2000 Land Rover Defender TD5. The main accessories I've got on it are quite a lot. It's got heavy duty suspension out of Land Rover 130, poly airbag suspension in the rear, 12,000 pound winch with plasma rope and a thimble on the front, front rear diff locks, fridge, rock sliders. I've got the cargo drawer in the back. I carry two CBs, HID lights on the front, and the LEDs up top give me a good range of light. The cargo is just about anywhere. Some of the places we like to go to is Victorian high country, the Blue Mountains, Nunes, Spanish Steps, all those sorts of places. Anywhere we can go, that's where we take this car. The only future mods I can really add to that is bridging ladders that come out of Germany that mount on the side of the car. We've got a few trips we're planning. We want to do Ayers Rock via Cameron's Corner and we're also planning a trip to Tasmania sometime early next year. Announcements on the next Your Rig trip and how you could be the weekly rig will be made shortly. And this week's Your Rig has won. It's an electric blue span set snatch strap, a super mini booster 12 volt 180 amp hour jump starter, a four wheel drive road atlas thanks to HEMA, plus a massive HEMA map of Australia. 
a comprehensive Holden 4x4 recovery kit, an ARB jacket, a can of ARB emergency survival socks, an ARB Ariel stuffed toy, an ARB 4B, a drink bottle and travel mug from ARB, two copies of Wild Deer and Hunting Adventures magazine, two copies of Blitz Australia martial arts magazine, a copy of 4x4 Australia magazine, a copy of Dirt Comp magazine, one of the new Oricom 5 watt handheld UHFs, a magnetic rifle rest from Eagle Eye Hunting, a Nava USB power cup, a Donaldson diesel fuel filter kit for added inline filtration and protection, a bottle of Sweet Baby Ray's barbecue sauce, a pair of smart scissors from Keesler Knives Australia, a stubby of Bundaberg ginger beer, a Toyota Land Cruiser Legend DVD from Terrain Tamer, a Berrima diesel cap, Superior Engineering cap, Superior Engineering stubby holder, a Carry Boy cap, an emergency gear oil pack from 360 gearboxes and diffs, an emergency ration of Ocean Delight tuner and a pair of four-wheel drive TV small stickers. And it's all neatly wrapped up in an ARB carry bag. Simon and Miranda, thank you very much. The prizes are great and will be very well appreciated amongst the family. This round of the Warn Trophy Italia was held near Sassello within the Liguria province of Italy. The race ran over two days in early June with stages ranging from long loops of around 12 kilometres to the faster four stage sprints of Sunday at around 500 metres each. 20 competitors were brave enough to take on these tough conditions but the Sunday stages were restricted to the extreme class with 38 inch plus tyres. Born Trophy Italia is the brainchild of Ricky Pisani, who along with his club, the Dead Dogs, sets all the stages and coordinates all of the events. The Dead Dogs Club has 150 members and 45 registered competition teams. The Dead Dogs Club is a unique gathering of hardened extreme 4x4 enthusiasts. To join, you must be prepared to go beyond the normal roads seek out and face the toughest challenges and accept that your rig will invariably get damaged along the way. Just by looking at the rigs and trails you can see how committed the Dead Dogs crew are and it's inspiring to see such serious 4x4 competition flourishing worldwide. You can view more of their events and information free on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash WTI Warn Trophy Italia Extreme Off-Road. Like most events, the WTI series could not run without its sponsors and the supporters of round two included Warren Winch, 4 Technique, Rocks 4x4 Jeep Accessories, 4 Wheel Drive Milano, Traction 4x4 and 4x4 Magazine. Thanks to all the volunteers, supporters and assistants for their help in making this round another huge extreme off-road success. Well, Ricky Pisani and the Dead Dogs crew have more WTI action coming our way. Round 3 ran mid-July and the final round for 2013 is booked for September. Good luck and we look forward to the exciting action.
Hi, I'm Dave from Responsive Engineering. We're quite often asked how sensitive or how quickly WaterWatch can respond to water in the fuel. WaterWatch goes through its pre-check. System is operating normally. The slightest bit of water and WaterWatch will initiate, which will allow you to stop the vehicle, drain any water, and protect your vehicle from thousands of dollars worth of damage. I'm Clint Reed from Reedy's 4x4, standing here with the Terminator. The Terminator was built in 1990 to be raced at the Fossil Mud Race. Greg Southern, the original builder, built this car to come and have a play after it had a road register car at Port, and it's been going ever since. It's got a 460 rear mount with a Toyota three-speed box, 18-inch rise tyres. It's actually a Toyota cabin, sort of half of it anyway, with a rear mount, all the diffs are turned upside down for the rear mount to make them drive straight instead of them going for three gears in reverse. As soon as you turn the diffs up the other way, we've got three greasing forward. Greg actually sold this car to Porky, which owned it for about four years after that, and then Porky passed away from cancer, and he was one of the big blokes behind Mud Racing. Always there, always have a laugh and a beer with Porky. Big Joe's gone and bought this car back. We've got her up and running. We ran her up at Shep the other day, and unfortunately she blew a diff. We fixed the diff, and then with all the new rules getting a bit tight, we've had to rebuild the whole cage and fix up a lot of the panels and give her a bit of a spray and brought her back. We only started on Monday and got her all flying again, so Joey's brought her up here and having a crack. I believe he's not far off the fastest time today at the minute, so going back about 23 years, this car's been going, and it's probably got mud in the chassis still from 23 years ago, by the way, it looked under there the other day when I was washing it. We also picked up a sponsor during the week for this car. Greg Scanlon from ARB and Bendigo set us up with a set of shocks, or actually six shocks, because she's got two in the rear. We put some front 60 series shocks in the back because the motor's in the back. It's a bit hard to work out the spring pressures and the shock pressures and, and what to run when it's all asked about. And Reedage 4x4 put the rest in with the cage and the, spraying a bit of kill rust around and, and washing the chassis out and getting Joey up and running for the event this weekend and for the next 10 years. Thank you so much for tuning in. Now some big news you may have already heard, but just in case you haven't, I am running for the Senate with the Outdoor Recreation Party. Jump online to find out more details. For now, that's it for this episode. I'm Simon Christie. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard. I look forward to your company next week.